Hi, I'm Jamie Quinn. Coming up on One on One, First Local's Candace Batista will speak to the man who built the very first apartment building in Mississauga. It was a risky venture for 1957, but it all worked out, and now he's known as one of the powerhouses in our community. His friends call him Iggy, but you might recognize his last name, Kenef. So you were born in Bulgaria. Tell me, what was your journey like there? No, I'm born in Bulgaria in 1926, <laughs> and the journey was beautiful. I was a young boy, only 14 and a half, when I left Bulgaria, and I went to Austria. There I stayed with uh, a member of some of our family and good friends uh, until 1951. Then you came to Canada. Why Canada? Well, Canada is special. Uh, in '51, uh, the communists were chasing me to join uh, go the army in Bulgaria. Naturally, that was against my thought. The last thing I had thought to go to Bulgaria in the army in '51, and uh, <clears throat> so I uh, felt where I could move when I was suggested to me by a good uh, British friend in Austria. He was with the Occupation Army, British Occupation Army, and he suggested to me this, uh, to go overseas, and I, uh, and I say, where overseas? And he selected, uh, suggested New Zealand and Australia or United States. But uh, I say Canada is nice and close to Europe, and uh, he likes Canada because he was training Canadian soldiers during the war in Canada. And he liked Canada very much when he recommended us I come to Canada. And, and matter of fact, he helped me to uh, uh, buy my uh, <coughs> transportation to Canada. And it made, he made it very easy to come to Canada. You came to Canada, you, you came by yourself? No, with my wife uh, first, my first, my late wife I came. and. Uh, we came uh, to Toronto directly, and uh, for the first two, three week, three week actually, I stayed in. Well, just about yeah, just about a month. I was looking around, wondering what I'm gonna do and and uh, where I am, because it's not very easy. I think the toughest things for a person is to uh, be uprooted from your homeland and placed in another country, and no matter how good things are, uh, when you go to another country and you don't speak the language, it's very tough. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very, I'm sympathizing with any uh, immigrants coming to this country without the English language, and I even my, any of my family wants to come to Canada, I, I recommend it. first you learn English if you want to come to Canada. Did you have English? No, I didn't have any English, and that is the reason I'm saying. Wow. Uh, without, it was a very tough for me. So how did you get over that? How did you overcome that barrier? <clears throat> no, yeah, I was very lucky that I, uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't get over that uh, subject at all because I still my lang my English is still not good even today, uh, <laughs> after 51 years. But uh, at least I been able to communicate with her. Uh, follow men here, and uh, but uh, I was very fortunate as I uh, went into a construction industry. When the construction industry, all you need that time, good muscles, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, <clears throat> and work hard, and uh, uh, less uh, you talking the better is for you. So I was in fortunate to start working for a ship corporation. Uh, in Mississauga, and that's what I uh, end with. So, how did you get started in property development? What was your first? Your first building was a small building in Mississauga. Oh, well, first building was very small. Matter of fact, first building was a 550 square feet, 540 square foot little house I built for myself. And uh, that's right. When I came in '51, and in fall, uh, I bought my first lot, and in '52. Uh, 
Uh, 11 months after I came to Canada, I was living in my home. Wow. Yeah. So what was that like? It was beautiful to live in your own home. And I, I always admiring people driving to build their homes because I think uh, it's like a bird without nest. It's very tough, you know. You gotta have a, your own nest. And I felt this, uh, uh, having my little house first was a great start. And then I went on the uh, uh, mortgage that little house and started two more houses. And, and the wheel started and here we are. 50 years later, thousands and thousands of homes, apartments, and offices, and plazas, everything behind our back. When you came to Canada, did you anticipate such a huge success? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I, I was conf completely confused when I came to Canada. Mm -hmm. And even some time after, because uh, I might think my biggest obstacle was my uh, language, like being able to communicate with people and that was the biggest thing. But I was very fortunate because I spoke German. And uh, as you know, German and English are very related languages. And that would help me to pick up English a little better. So when you first started here, who was your support network? Who did you, who did you turn to for advice? <coughs> yeah, I was, as again, I was very lucky to be able to get a job with uh, one of the most prominent builders in Canada at that time and, and even today, years after, uh, Mr. Gordon Ship uh, uh, was the first uh, mass productive home with a massive builder home. There he built uh, uh, hundreds of houses a year. Uh, we used to build uh, uh, two houses per day when uh, he was uh, really going highway. Uh, and. Uh, when I started working for Mr. Ship, I saw the inspiration. You know, here is a person, uh, uh, because I uh, <clears throat> studied his biography a bit and know how he, at that time, 50, he was 50 years in business practically, and how he started in the beginning. And I felt uh, by that time, gee, that's what I like to be like when I, <laughs> in 50 years from now. And luckily, I reached that level. So what is your secret to success? My secret to success is hardworking and honest with people. Coming up after the break, more with Iggy Kinev. about your family, your wife. You have two wonderful daughters. Tell me a little bit about your family life. <coughs> no, I, uh, 1977, I uh, <coughs> uh, brought my uh, wife from Bulgaria. I'm born, Bulgarian born, as I mentioned. And uh, right after, we had uh, two girls. Right now, Anna Marie is 23, and uh, Christine is 21. Anna Marie finished uh, Georgetown University in, in Washington, D.C. last year, and she's working for Morgan Stanley in New York as an analyst, an investment analyst. And uh, Christina is in Columbia University, finished grade three, third year university, and uh, 
she's going to, matter of fact, start uh, in two weeks working for J.P. Morgan. Mm. So they're both in financing, and hopefully they're going to need a couple of years experience before they go further and get their, complete their uh, uh, academics, mm -hmm. uh, get their MBA, law, whatever they're going to do, whatever so they decide to do. You have no vision for them to take over your business one day? Oh, well, gee, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly waiting for it. I just tell them the other day, I say, I don't have time. <laughs> you got, uh, have to hurry up. <laughs> get your experience later, get your academics first so you can start working. No, no, the, no better experience than working. And, uh, and of course, I want, him to work, want them to work for uh, my company. You know, kind of uh, uh, property has uh, sugar support to girls. And uh, and kind of probably needs their uh, uh, advice on, uh, especially uh, Anna Maria now is in uh, second year working and uh, I'm very pleased with she's result from her daily uh, study. Her bosses loves her and she's a good employee and and I'm looking forward to finishing about three year and come with the company and get their law degree in Toronto and start with a company. That's wonderful. Tell me what makes up the Kenef group of companies. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> as you know, we are uh, in a, a, a residential. Uh, we have a, quite a few apartment buildings in Saga, Brampton, in Toronto. We build over 8,000 of them. And uh, we had to sell like a baker could eat all our bread. We had to sell some to be able to sustain. And uh, we uh, uh, managing some uh, managing some apartments. And we own some plazas, and uh, we do online development quite a bit. Uh, we also uh, in the last few years we've been involved very heavy in the <coughs> uh, golf industry. Uh, we are right now the largest uh, uh, golf operator, private golf operator. The public company are much bigger than us, but uh, in Canada practically. And uh, we're hoping to have this summer over a quarter million people playing in our golf courses. Wow. And uh, we're trying to provide the best services, golf courses to be up to date. And with all the environment and uh, ingredients required for, uh, we try to greet the people with smile and send them home with smile. And I hope they stay enjoy it. Uh, so are you a golfer? How did you get into the golf industry? <coughs> How I get in golf industry? That's a long story, but I'll <laughs> tell you briefly. Uh, in 1958, I was building a house across the street from the Great Valley Golf Club, and uh, I didn't even know what is a golf course. And a guy uh, shanked his ball right in my window and knocked the window down, <laughs> and living room window. And uh, I was quite upset when I went upstairs trying to argue with the guy, but they calmed me down, the young, easy, easy young man. And uh, they give me their business card, and they told me to go and fix the window, and they will be happy to pay for. Mm. And uh, so I notify my insurance agent right away, and he told me, "Iggy, just fix your window. Don't worry. Golfer are the best people in the world. Mm. You could, if you don't trust nobody but a golfer, you should, because you will see." And he, said, he suggested that I should go on Saturday play golf with him, to show me how the golf is. So he took me down to Peel Village, and uh, the first tee is elevated tee, and it was a dry summer at that time, and I hit that ball. And the first shot, and I remember, was 264 yard, and the ball dribbled right on the green, you know, down, and uh, he said, my golly, he, I've been playing golf here for 25 years. I've never been in a green the first shot. And you already, it's going to be a golf out of you. I said, yeah, I hope so. So anyway, he took me a few times, and then I uh, started playing regularly. And then I tried to join Mississauga Golf Club, and 
uh, Miss Saga Golf Club turned me down. Why? Oh, because my name is not uh, McDonald. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and uh, so I joined, I played at Credit Valley. And at Credit Valley, they were very gracious to take me right away. And uh, here I am, I have to play 28 year golf there, and I love it. At every time I try to seven minute time, I go right away. And I st of course, I used to live right in there in the woodland, nice and close. In five minutes, I was in the golf course. So it was very, very handy for me and very thankful. People are very kind to me. And now you have your own golf course. <laughs> now that's what I promised myself. Someday <laughs> I'm going to have my own golf course. <laughs> so the opportunity arrived uh, in the uh, 70s, and I uh, asked my good friend Ted Becker, a uh, nice young man, architect from Port Crate. He w used to do an our landscaping, architecture for all uh, houses and apartments. And I said, Ted, I just <coughs> acquired 500 acres, get me the best golf course in town. And, uh, and he did it. He did a very good job. And Mr. Schnarr and Mr. Baker together. Uh, Mr. Glenn Schnarr is a, is a uh, planner. And of course, they both of them worked together. And uh, they designed the best golf course. And we are very proud of that. Uh, we have been selected in a number of uh, <coughs> uh, years. We've been uh, number of either one or a two or a three in uh, Canada or a GPA. GTA. So I'm very pleased. And of course, we hired a very uh, good young man at uh, that time. He's catching up with my age, too, now. <laughs> <laughs> but that time, he was a young man. And a fellow named Alex Temporali. And I said, Alex, give me one a clubhouse, a little bit out of ordinary uh, for public golf course, because we're a public facility here. Anybody could come play golf at Lionet. And uh, he did. He did a great job. It was an unusual, nice little clubhouse here. Uh, accommodates about 650 people. And uh, various functions you could have at once. Mm -hmm. So we designed it. We built two golf courses. It's a legend. Mm -hmm. A little bit tougher down below. It's around it's 154 slopes. And uh, master, upstairs, upper level. <clears throat> it's a beautiful golf course also, and uh, people enjoy it, and I enjoy having it. I just want to go back to something you mentioned a little earlier about um, a golf course turning you down. As an immigrant from another country coming to Canada, did you, did you experience a lot of that kind of um, <coughs> obstacle? Oh yes, uh, I think uh, at that time was quite a bit uh, discrimination. Uh, and resentment, you know, you got to realize uh, it was a du during the Cold War, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and there was uh, quite a resentment against uh, newcomers, especially newcomers, uh, uh, their background is from East Europe, you know, because uh, part of the mm -hmm. Russian Empire, the Soviet Empire, and, uh, and naturally you could expect that, you know. And uh, here comes the guy, guess that he was your enemy today, he's your friend, you know. Then you could expect that, but uh, in generally, I have to say to myself this, uh, and to you, this uh, people are ninety nine percent of the people are very nice. Mm -hmm. Then you get one uh, guy or a two, but you get in every nationality in every country. Mm -hmm. But overall, they are not more uh, uh, hospitality people than Canadians. Look how many people came to this country. Uh, matter of fact, the newcomers taking over now <laughs> with the more non-Canadian born than Canadian born in this country. And uh, our leaders are great. And look at our prime minister. Uh, he just said, bring me the more the better. And uh, Canada, as you know, brings every year 250, 300,000 people to this country because that generates instinct, instant business to this country, because without um, <clears throat> uh, growth, you die. No matter in business, in country, you have to have that natural growth. And as today, um, natural birth population is decreasing every year through various reasons. 
I think that is uh, only one way to supplement through immigration. And uh, naturally, Canada is very fortunate to have uh, immigrants because uh, uh, here uh, uh, today you're bringing a, a young family, both educate, well educated, professional people. They instant produce it for this country. You don't have to spend a million dollars to university, and you know how much it costs to, uh, today to send the kids to university, and how much it costs the infrastructure for the for the same. Uh, <clears throat> so therefore, uh, it's a great asset. It sure, cost us uh, uh, money through the welfare of uh, their children, if they uh, until they settle down, if they need to be or uh, various. Uh, 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 organi various organizing a per person's his life or a, or a true, uh, especially his uh, uh, true persecution came to this country, not as a normal immigrant, but as a person who ran away from something, you know, from the old country, you know, a dictatorial government, and all kind of reason person. Nobody leaves this homeland for nothing, yeah. because. As we said earlier, uh, living uh, your uh, uh, nest is not very easy. You know, that you're living your f uh, like myself, for instance. I left uh, Bulgaria when I was 14 and a half. Now, <clears throat> I might have everything, but I didn't have that uh, that young life, young the life of the as a teenager. I didn't have a teenager life. I didn't have nothing. I was uh, instant. Instantly, I had to look after myself. Today, my kids are 23 year old, and I uh, worrying about every day if they don't phone me. <laughs> Today, twice, I was wondering what's happened. You know, uh, we feel that uh, they are already adults, and we're still thinking they're children. Of course, they're going to be my children forever. But uh, that's what that's what it is. You know, so I just don't know how my mother at that time put up with me, <laughs> being so far away and not being able to communicate, especially during the war. But uh, the, the, for every uh, <clears throat> for every sacrifice, for every victory, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You ha you can have a, a victory without uh, uh, giving something. Uh, the important thing is that the reward is such a great here sitting for everybody to be picked up. Just go and get it. You know, work hard. All the uh, ingredients are here. You have to cultivate your land. You have to seed the seed, and you will cultivate harvesting later. If you don't seed, you won't harvest. So would that be your advice for immigrants that are just arriving in Canada? For immigrants and non-immigrants. I think, uh, uh, to be truthfully, I think the immigrants uh, uh, have more experience. They have to. Because immigrant comes in, he, he starts from scratch. Mm -hmm. He has to work for a car, for shelter, for TV, for a wash machine, for whatever it is. He has to be as good as next door neighbor. And so therefore, uh, <clears throat> he know he has to work. There is no two way. Uh, but sometimes the uh, Canadian born here, they think, oh, well, dad had going to give me a rub. Grandpa gonna leave something for me and all that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, by working hard and depending, as uh, President Kennedy said, show me what you're gonna do for your country. What's in store for the future for Kenef Industries? Tell me, you were mentioning a new golf course. Oh, <clears throat> there is opportunity uh, unlimited because we could do an lots of things today. Uh, all I need more time, which I don't have. And uh, we, for instance, in developing uh, <coughs> lots, subdivisions, uh, involved quite a bit at this time. We uh, hoping to build an, another office building beside us. We have two apartment buildings to build in Mississauga and two in Oakville. One is right at the gold station in Oakville. 
and uh, two right here at uh, Specs Drive in Mississauga. We're hoping by before the end of the year to start a couple of projects there. The economy is in great shape. Interest rate is in the right, is the best in 40 years since I remember. Give us some final words of wisdom. Final word of wisdom, what kind of wisdom I say? I spoke only of wisdom up so far. Anyway, I think the only thing I could say is work hard, work hard, and work hard. And always think how to help your fellow man. Yeah, because without community, we're nothing. A strong community is a strong country. Thank you.